Hello buddy, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm gonna be trying to survive 100 days in the Minecraft 1.17 caves in hardcore mode. So this was done in Minecraft Snapshot 21W07A. And so this already shows you that this has taken me weeks and weeks to make. So I would really appreciate it if you could leave a like and subscribe to the channel to show your support. That would really help me out. And if we reach 1000 likes, I might make another 100 days of surviving the 1.17 caves. So as I said at the start, I'm going to be trying to survive in the caves of 1.17. There's going to be lots of different challenges to overcome, like getting wood, getting food and all other kinds of resources you can get easily on the surface but not underground so i set the end goal for these first 100 days to getting full enchanted diamond armor and a full beacon as well there we go i think that's pretty much it i hope you enjoyed this video because i put a lot of effort into it but let's just get started with day number one on day one, I found a mine shaft to get some wood, got a crafting table and a pickaxe very quickly. Stone pickaxe after that and then I could make a furnace as well. I started mining a whole lot of iron and some coal. And then I nearly got blown up by a creeper. Smelted the iron, made an iron pickaxe, iron armor and then I was very happy with all the iron armor I had found. Got a shield, got some string from the mine shaft, slayed a skeleton or actually had a pretty heavy battle with it. Then made a bed and went to sleep. On day two I first made a flint and steel, got some redstone and torches. Then I almost drowned but luckily I got out and I made a little safe house and then I got some water and finally found a way to get some food by just fishing. I got a salmon, smelted it in a furnace and got another fish as well. Ate my very first piece of food and then went to sleep. Day 3 started with mining some iron and smelting it. Then afterwards I went fishing some more, got some awful items but some fish as well. Then I got some more wood and found my very first diamonds. On day 4 I started expanding my bunker and filling it with grimstone as deep slate was called before. Then I went all the way to the bottom of the world, found some gold and reached bedrock and went back to sleep. I really needed some more food so on day 5 I did a whole lot of fishing for salmon and cod and I got a whole lot of it. Then I also went mining and found some gold and found this massive cave. I made a clock on day 6 and then found some more diamonds. I went to this massive underwater cave, found some gold and then almost died to these two skeletons. I ran away and got down to half a heart. Then I did some more fishing and went to sleep. More fishing was done on day 7 because I still had half a heart and I had to get some food to heal up. But I finally got enough food and could get some more hearts. Then I would fish some more to get some future food. And went and made a shield. Then almost died to these creepers and found an amethyst geode. I found a massive cave on day 8 and decided to explore it. There were lots of mobs in this cave with all some diamonds. I had to fight a whole lot of mobs to get to these diamonds but I finally got them. Then because fishing was still my only source of food I caught some more fish and smelted them and went to sleep. Day 9 started off with getting some obsidian with my diamond pickaxe and after getting the obsidian I went caving, found this skeleton trying to shoot me but failing miserably and after some more exploring I found a dungeon with some nice loot in the chests and found some more diamonds. Day 10 started with some fishing and then I made a nether portal and went into the nether. There I shot a magma cube and then looked at some striders. I found some mushrooms and nether quartz ore. I found another fortress and a blaze spawner where I got my very first blaze rod. I got a couple more and then went back. Day 11 was very uneventful. I just crafted some nice items, fished for a couple of minutes and that's pretty much it. I went back into the nether on day 12 and decided to barter with this piglin over here. I got a whole lot of nice items as you can see in this tiny time lapse over here. I actually got Soul Speed 2 boots, Ender Pearls, and a Soul Speed 1 book. I went back, killed the skeleton, and went to sleep. 
Since I couldn't get a book in the usual way, I had to make a grindstone and disenchant my soul speed book so I could make the enchanting table. And then I enchanted my sword and pickaxe. Then I found a minecart chest, some diamonds, another minecart chest and got some oak logs. I found some more minecart chests on day 14 along with a whole lot of diamonds. Three veins in total. Then back at the bunker I got some dirt and started mining out an area to create a little farm for all the melon seeds and beetroot I found in the minecart chest. So I planted them and lit up the area and went to sleep. Day 15 was the day I decided I had to renovate my bunker and make it look a little bit nicer with all the different types of grimstone blocks. I made a proper entrance and filled up all the walls and the roof. To make it all look a little bit nicer, I even filled up the pool and then showed you around with this little spin. Then I made some lanterns to replace the ugly torches. On day 16 I went for a little venture throughout the mineshaft around my bunker, found some coal and gold. I found another minecart chest and got some iron and stumbled across the cave spider spawner. Then this creeper blew up part of my base but luckily not my bed. Day 17 was very lucky because here I found some diamonds, I found some more. Then I killed a salmon and got some gold, fought off some zombies and found more diamonds. And here once again more diamonds. More diamonds and lapis lazuli. And diamonds. Diamonds. But I also did some fishing in the end. With all of these diamonds I could finally make some diamond armor. And I was very happy with this of course. I fished some more, got another shield and went into the nether to get more blaze rods from all the blazes from the blaze spawner. Which took a pretty long time but after that I mined some gold because there's a whole lot of nether gold ore. And with all this gold I started to trade with another piglin to get some more ender pearls. On day 19 I did some more fishing and made the eyes of ender. Then I went back into the nether to get some more nether gold ore. And I also mined some glowstone. Then I found some piglins and bartered a little bit more and got all of these items. I made another Eye of Ender on day 20 and mined some coal and some gold. Then I threw the first Eye of Ender and didn't know where it went. So I threw another one and saw it going into the wall over here. So I started mining. After some fishing on day 21, I went back to the place where I threw the Eye of Ender and then continued on mining. This went on for pretty much the entire day and until I went back to sleep. On day 22 I continued traveling towards the stronghold, mining, going through large caves and getting some resources in the meantime as well. I even got scared by this little bit of gravel over here that almost threw me down into a large ravine. I bridged it over, mined some more and then went to sleep. Day 23 was pretty much the same thing, although I did find some diamonds this time. Then I found some lava as well and bridged over another large gap. Then I continued on mining and even found another amethyst geode and continued mining throughout the rest of the day. Day 24 started off with even more mining and I even found some diamonds along the way. Almost got blown by a creeper and found a dungeon. And then finally I found the stronghold, went over to the library and got all the books I could get. Got some great enchanted books, made a diamond axe and then got even more books. I spent day 25 looking throughout the entire stronghold for different loot. I found a whole lot of different chests and then went over to the end portal as well. Filled it in with all the eyes of Ender I had and then went back to looking for more loot. Found some awesome enchanted books and then was very proud about finding the end portal and then went to sleep. Since I didn't have enough eyes of Ender to fill the end portal and because I wasn't really prepared yet, I went back all the way to my bunker on day 26, which took the entire day. Yes, it's a long way over to the stronghold. But I finally found my way back on day 27, even though it took a very long time. And when I got back I decided I had to carve out an area to create a little enchanting room. So I put on the bookcases and the enchanting table and there we go. I enchanted some of my items with level 30 and fished some more. 
The next day, I also decided I needed a new room to store all of my items. So I hollowed out an entire area, filled in with all the different types of grimstone. So that's the ceiling, the walls, and yes, of course, also the floor. Put some lanterns in it and got all the essential blocks and some chests as well. Then I got some more wood to get more chests and also created some item frames to label all the different chests so it would be a little bit organized. I mined my first melon and then started organizing all of the items I had already obtained into all the different chests I had labeled. This organization continued on day 30, but I actually had to get some more wood so I could create more chests to store even more items in. Then I mined some more melons and continued organizing my items and then was finally done with sorting all of my items so I could go to sleep. Day 31 started off with some farming, but I quickly went into the nether because I wanted to get a whole lot of quartz and a whole lot of levels as well to start enchanting some items. So as you can see, I got a whole lot of quartz and then went back into the overworld to sleep. Now I got the levels from the quartz, I could use it to enchant my bow and some pickaxes. Then I decided I want to expand the farm I had created to get some more food. Because melons were now my primary food source, so I mined some more melons. Went on to day 33, where I decided I wanted to decorate both the enchanting room and the farm as well. So I got out all of my grimstone and completed the the enchanting room and moved over to the farm where I added a strip of stone bricks. Then a creeper blew up part of my base and I had to redecorate that part again the next day. Which started off with some farming and then indeed I continued decorating the farm room with the grimstone and the stone bricks. And then I showed off the decoration. I added stone here and some strips of grimstone and went back into the nether to get even more quartz and more levels and went back to sleep. Day 35 started with me enchanting my boots and then going back into the nether to get more levels. I also shot this ghost and then went back to mining even more quartz. This went on for the rest of the day and then I also killed a wilder skeleton but got no skull sadly. Then I enchanted both a pickaxe and my chest plate and got some more melons, went back into the nether to barter with some piglins and then almost fell to my death right here. Just one and a half hearts left, then I got my ender pearls and went back into the overworld. Now I created the last eye of ender I needed to fill in the end portal and went to travel all the way back to the stronghold, fought off a skeleton and a creeper right here as well. And I even explored a dungeon I found along the way, where I got a name tag and some more loot as well. On day 38 I reached the stronghold, went over the end portal and went into the end. There I threw an ender pearl over to the main island and started shooting all the different crystals on the obsidian pillars so the dragon couldn't regenerate its health. I even had to tower up to one of the pillars because I wasn't shooting good enough. But then I fell off and saved myself with the bucket. And after destroying all the crystals I started attacking the dragon with my sword when it was perching and with the bow when it was not. An enderman almost killed me here but luckily I had a bucket of water. Then I went back over to the ender dragon because it was perching, did a whole lot more damage using my sword. And then it was only a small slither of health left. I killed the Enderman and then shot the dragon a couple more times and finally killed it with my sword. And I beat the game. But of course we haven't reached our goals just yet. I got the Ender Dragon Egg as well as a trophy and went back over to the overworld. But first of course read all the credits. Yes. And after that very long day I happily went back to sleep. I stashed away the dragon egg and because I had gotten a whole lot of experience from the dragon I started enchanting my armor, even got an anvil to repair some of my armor as well and then continued enchanting my axe, my sword and getting an even better sword in the end as well by removing the enchantments and trying again. Then I got some melons and went to bed. 
On day 40 I went over to the nether fortress and started killing a whole lot of wither skeletons and looting all the chests of the nether fortress as well. There wasn't too many great things in there, some diamonds, that's nice of course. But I sadly couldn't get my hands on a wither skeleton skull and even accidentally hit a zombie pigment and then I just decided to run away. But since I wanted a beacon I had to go back into the nether to kill even more wither skeletons. So that's what I did the next day and it paid off because I got a Wither Skeleton Skull pretty quickly but that was the luck for the rest of the day because I killed a whole lot more Wither Skeletons but didn't get another skull. So I headed back into the overworld to sleep. The start of day 42 once again saw me slaying Wither Skeletons but no luck once again. I also got into a fight with some piglins so I decided to head back into the overworld and decided to start hollowing out a new area to expand the farm. I replaced some blocks blown up by a creeper, got a melon and then went to bed. Then I made some beds and then made a shovel and enchanted it as well and continued hollowing out an area to expand the farm, putting in all the dirt, water and of course the melons and beetroot. Then I wanted to go find ancient debris in the nether but I saw that it was late in the day so I headed back and decided to postpone the hunt for an ancient debris for the next day. So I went back into the nether all the way down, I had a fire resistance potion so I could go down to the bottom of the world to get hopefully some ancient debris by blowing up a couple of beds. But sadly I didn't find any and I bridged over to a new part of the nether to get some bone blocks instead, which is the end of day 44. But I hadn't given up on the ancient debris just yet so I went back into the nether on day 45 and exploded a couple more beds. But once again, sadly, no luck, so I decided to strip mine a little bit, but that also didn't work. So once again, I got some more bone blocks, which would be helpful for all the farming I had to do to get some food. So because I didn't find any ancient debris, I decided it was better to just stick to the original plan of killing wither skeletons first. So we went back to the nether fortress and expanded some of the platforms to increase the spawn rates of the wither skeletons. And that took a pretty long time, but that would pay out in the long run. And that's all I did on day 46. I go straight back into the nether the next day to get some more wither skeleton skulls, of course. I expand once again some platforms and in the meantime also kill a whole lot of wither skeletons. And yes, as I said, it did pay out because right here I got another wither skeleton skull. And I was very happy about it because I even put it on my head. Day 48 started with some farming and then I went back into the nether to hopefully get that last wither skeleton skull we need. No luck today though sadly but I did get another advancement by killing this ghost with its own fireball. Then after sleeping of course on day 49 I went straight back into the nether to try my luck once again. Creating even more platforms for the wither skeletons to spawn on and killing a whole lot of them in the meantime as well. But sadly since the drop rates of wither skeleton skulls are so low I once again didn't get any even though I had looting too. Then on day 50 halfway through this challenge I had completed one of my goals of having enchanted diamond armor. I continued working towards the second goal of creating a full beacon by killing even more wither skeletons. But luck once again wasn't on my side and I couldn't get the last wither skeleton skull. After getting some melons I go back into the nether on day 51 to yes once again kill more wither skeletons to hopefully get that wither skeleton skull I need. And after days of killing wither skeletons I finally got the third wither skeleton skull here. Finally. Now of course the next thing I need to do is actually kill the wither, but I don't want to take the risk of dying while fighting the wither. So I decided to go back over to the stronghold and go back into the end. And this is because there is a very easy way to kill the wither in the end below the end portal. But before I do that I first farm up on some ender pearls and there I got four stacks of ender pearls. Now I go below the end portal, build up the wither and I summon it right here. And it takes damage in the bedrock and then dies pretty easily and I get the nether star. Now to get the beacon I will also need glass but I'm not quite sure how to get that just yet so I just decided to expand the farm once again so we can get some more food because I'm always running out of food. So I add all decorations and of course more melons as well. 
Then I start decorating the nether portal room, which I should have done a long time ago. I continue this decorating on day 55. I take out the nether portal and make it a little bit bigger. I add a whole lot of quartz, some quartz pillars, and of course some grimstone. Then I add a beautiful roof with a lantern and a little pathway as well. I also decide I should decorate the wall in the chest area, which I didn't decorate yet, and then go to sleep. The following day I make some pathways in my bunker, I farm some melons and then go for a little mining expedition on which not much actually happened. So that's pretty much it for day 56. I go for another mining trip on day 57 on which I actually find some stuff, some redstone, some lapis lazuli and also a lot of coal. And I also start grabbing all the iron I see because I want to make the full beacon out of iron and we need 164 iron blocks for a full beacon. At the end of day 57 I also found a cave which I explore on day 58. I jumped down and I found some gold and I of course also found a whole lot of diamonds. One, two, three and four veins of diamonds. And then I headed back to the base to sleep. I had been low on wood for this entire playthrough and on day 59 I finally got the bright idea to actually go into the nether because the nether has forests. So I got a whole lot of wood from all of these crimson forests and this should be enough wood for the rest of the 100 days. And then I traveled back to my bunker. On day 60 I first made some chests from the wood I got in the previous day. And then I thought of a way to find glass because the end cities actually contain purple glass. So I wanted to go to the end city. So I traveled all the way back to the stronghold. Almost getting blown up by a creeper and then having to fight another one. Sleeping in the amethyst geode. The glass was not the only reason for going to the end chips. There's also of course the elytra, but I needed fireworks and for that I needed paper. So I grabbed all the paper from the stronghold and then went over to the end portal and made some fireworks. I got some iron bars, iron doors and books from the stronghold to stock up on resources and then went to sleep before going into the end. Which I did on day 62. I went to the outer end islands, broke some chorus fruit and then went looking for a end city. There I found one and I started killing out the shulkers for shulker shells and then I started mining the glass which I needed for the beacon of course. But sadly this first end city didn't have an end city ship so I traveled to another one which did have an end ship. I traveled up through the towers killing all the shulkers in my way and actually got some good loot here as well. In the form of enchanted diamond tools and some diamonds and then I went over to the end ship and there I got even more loot and of course the elytra which had to show off. I got the ender dragon hat and then got some more shulkers for more shulker boxes and flew away from that end city but not before killing another shulker. Then I went back into the main end island and back into the overworld where I wanted to make a nether portal but didn't have any obsidian so I broke the ender chest and got obsidian from that. So I made the nether portal on day 64, a stack of days already, went into the nether and got back into my bunker way quicker than when traveling in the overworld because of course one block in the nether is eight blocks in the overworld. Then I put the ender dragon head moving above my bed and went to sleep. Only to wake up to a very big problem because you can't make a beacon with magenta glass. So now I had to find another way of obtaining glass to somehow create the beacon still. I found a witch, killed it and got some sugar which will be very important in the future. I got some iron and then went back into the base, smelted my iron and went to sleep. I spent day 66 mining a whole lot of iron because once again we need 164 iron blocks for a full beacon. Of course I also killed some mobs and got some more melons for more food. And then went straight back to mining more iron, smelting it of course as well and creating 21 iron blocks here. On day 67 I got a spider eye and combining it with the sugar found previously and a brown mushroom, you can craft a fermented spider eye with which you can brew a potion of weakness which you need to cure zombie villagers. This is another way of obtaining glass because the level 3 librarian trades emeralds for glass. That's why I placed down a lectern. Then I make the potions throwable and try to hunt for a zombie villager by going throughout all the caves around the bunker. I find a whole lot of mobs but sadly not a zombie villager so I go back into the bunker and get some more food. Then I just smelt all of the iron I found during the day. 
The hunt continues on day 69 and yes, finally I found a zombie villager. I lead it back to my bunker and place it in the right area. I throw the potion and give it the golden apple so it will start converting over to a villager which takes a long time. So in the meantime I just decorate the area. There we go, the villager is here and now I go to sleep. On day 70 after gathering some more food I prepare for finding another zombie villager and then go out in the caves to try and find one. Because we need emeralds to get the gloss, we need to get a farmer to actually get some emeralds. On day 71 I decide to travel a little bit further away so I can find some more iron. Yes, once again we need a whole lot of iron for this beacon, so I go mine for a whole lot of iron. Luckily iron is not that hard to come across, so I can mine a whole lot in just one day. The next day I just get some food first and then I make and place down the composter needed for the farmer villager. I find another zombie villager and bring it down to the correct cell and block it in. Then I throw the potion and give it the golden apple so it can start converting. Then I do some farming to have some items to trade with the farmer. Now the zombie villager has converted into a villager I do some basic trading and afterwards go for another mining session to get once again more iron. I also find a minecart chest with pumpkin seeds so I can now get pumpkins as well to trade with the farmer. Then I loot the amethyst crystal and go back to the base to go back to bed. Then I smelt some smooth stone and actually add the pumpkins to my farm so I can now actually also trade these with the farmer right here. Just trading all of these to level up all the different villagers I currently have. Hoping that the librarian will sell glass for its third level. There's actually a two-thirds chance of it selling glass. So let's see if that actually works. Nope, no glass from this librarian. Now we'll need to get another librarian to get the glass. But first to do some more trading to see what the other trades of the villagers will be. Then I start expanding the farm once again. Because we will need a whole lot of pumpkins and melons to trade with the farmer. So I place down all the dirt, all the water and the stone bricks. And then plant the rest of the melon and pumpkin seeds. On day 67 I decide to cover up the water so I don't fall in. And I do some trading with the villagers and then expanding the villager room so we can add more villagers in the future. And actually found some diamonds there as well. Then I decorate the villager room with all the necessary decorations with grimstone and smooth stone slabs. Now instead of making my next villager a librarian, I decide to make it a farmer because there is once again a two-thirds chance of this farmer selling apples for its second level. And it will be very handy to have a steady source of apples to create more golden apples so we can convert even more zombie villagers to normal villagers. But first we will need another zombie villager. Day 78 starts like any normal day now by trading all the pumpkins and melons with villagers. And then I go mining for more iron. Of course also still on the lookout for a zombie villager. But in the meantime focusing mainly on getting as much iron as possible. So we can create that full beacon at the end of these 100 days. After some more trading the following day I actually find another zombie villager in the cave pretty close by. I bring it to the next cell and start converting it into a villager. Then I turn all my valuables into blocks and make it look pretty. Now the new farmer is here but I need to level it up so I need to get some beetroots. But sadly it doesn't trade any apples. I had just one goal on day 80 and that was to get as much iron as possible. So for the entire day I mined a whole lot of iron ore. I sadly didn't come across another zombie villager. I almost got blown up by a creeper but I survived it and then could get back to the bunker to smelt the iron and sleep. I smelted my iron and did some trading on day 81. And afterwards, yes, you probably already guessed it, I continued mining more iron ore, even underwater sometimes. Just doing everything to get as much iron ore as possible. Then I also fought some slimes and got a whole lot of slime balls, which might be useful in the future. On day 82, I continued smelting more iron. A little update, 57 out of 164 iron blocks obtained. So I continued the rest of day 82, just mining a whole lot of iron ore. You'll probably see this more during the video. Next, I prepare another cell for another farmer. I find a too tall flower just in a cave. This creeper almost blows up the base. Then I find a zombie in the villager room, but luckily I can kill it. And I get a whole lot of flowers from this one too tall flower with some bone meal. More farming and trading was done on day 84 and then I somehow find another too tall flower in a cave and I start mining more iron ore. 
Just hoping to get to that magic number of 164 iron blocks. I also find another dungeon with not too much loot in it. And that's pretty much it for day 84. With just 16 days left, the full beacon seems very far away. We're currently at 78 iron blocks. And I haven't gotten any glass to create a beacon yet. I find some more minecart chests. I even find a dungeon this day. And yes, as you might have expected, I mine more iron ore. Smelting, farming, trading, trading, crafting, mining iron ore, mining iron ore, and yes, mining iron ore. Oh, and mining gold ore, and also mining iron ore, and mining iron ore, and going back to the bunker to go to sleep. That was pretty strange, but day 87 consisted once again of trading more melons and pumpkins, and then mining some iron. We of course still need a librarian to sell us the glass we need for the beacon, but here I actually find a grass block, very rare in a cave, but I somehow find it. Then I mine some more iron ore and go back to sleep. Day 88 is actually pretty similar to the previous days right now with smelting, farming and trading. I currently have 99 iron blocks and I did find another two tall flower. I'm currently out of weakness potions but luckily I find another witch but sadly it doesn't drop any sugar. So we need to find another witch but in the meantime I yes mine some more iron ore. The following day I do more smelting, more farming, more trading and of course more iron ore mining. I didn't actually realize how much iron I needed for a full beacon. This took way too long but I did find another witch which yes finally dropped some sugar and then I fought off some zombies and went to bed. Now on day 90 I just need 44 more iron blocks and I brew another set of weakness potions then I start putting down some grass to get some seeds because I didn't have wheat yet but there we go now we have wheat as well. I also create a little area where some grass can spread. On day 91 I mainly do a whole lot of farming. I just got all the beetroot, melons and pumpkins and trade it with my farmer villagers. But since I still didn't have a farmer that traded apples, I found and converted another zombie villager on day 92 in hopes of finally getting the apple trade because I'm already running very low on golden apples. I do some more mining as well and then get back to the villager that has now been cured but it escapes but I do get it back into its cell. So then I start trading with the new farmer and then go to sleep. Sadly the third farmer also didn't sell apples so now I decided to just get back to getting a librarian to get some glass. So that's what I do on day 93, get another villager and then use my second to last golden apple on him. I do some more farming and start trading with the different villagers and currently I still need 31 more iron blocks for the full beacon. Once again there's a two thirds chance of this librarian selling glass for its third level. So let's see, finally got it? No. Still no glass trade from a librarian. So I find another zombie villager, put it back into another cell. And use my final golden apple to convert it into a villager. So hopefully this one sells glass, otherwise I have to go out exploring more. So we find out on day 95 if this librarian sells glass and yes, finally we have a librarian that sells glass. So we can make a beacon and now hollow out an area where we can build this beacon. So I have to deal with a whole lot of water here as well and I decided to build part of the beacon out of emeralds because I didn't have enough iron blocks yet. On day 96 I continue working on the beacon room adding some grimstone and some basalt in here as well. I have to mine some more basalt because it actually didn't have a lot of it. Then I continue mining out a space where the beacon can go and I start filling in the walls and filling in the beacon with all kinds of emerald blocks and iron blocks as well. Now I want to make sure that all the visible blocks are emerald blocks so I continue trading with all of my villagers because I think it will look a whole lot better if the beacon is entirely out of one type of block, at least the visible part. Then I add glass around the beacon as well, I have to buy some more and there we go. In this way you can see the beacon very well from above through the glass. So now I filled in the beacon and the walls, just the ceiling is left in the beacon room. Which I will decorate on day 98 where I first hollow out the entire roof and then place a whole lot of grimstone along with some polished grimstone as well. And then in the center I need to hollow out a hole because of course we need the beacon beam to go all the way to the surface. 
I do make a hole over to the surface, but I do burn the grass block I got from it because I didn't think it was fair to keep it. And there we go. There's the beacon. It is done. We have a full beacon in Minecraft Hardcore. After 98 days, we just completed our second goal. Now the only thing left to do on the second to last day is to replace some of the iron blocks with emerald blocks. So I do some more farming and trading to get more emeralds so we can fill in those last couple of emerald blocks. Replacing the visible iron blocks. And there we go, that's pretty much it. I activate the beacon with speed 2 to run about the base very quickly. And I'd also enchant some more items for if we need to continue on this series. I get some efficiency 5 pickaxes so we will be able to instant mine stone once putting haste 2 on the beacon. And there we go, now we're on day 100, the very last day of this adventure. I just start off with more farming and trading, get some grass over here. So now we have some grass blocks in our chest area as well. And these are the final valuables. And there we go, that was me surviving Minecraft Hardcore in the Minecraft 1.17 caves for 100 days. This project took so much time to complete, so I'd really appreciate it if you could leave a like and subscribe to the channel to show all of your support. Once again, if we reach 1000 likes, I might do the second 100 days as well, and even maybe in a newer snapshot. But of course, this does take a very long time also studying, so I don't know if I will be able to do that. If you all show a whole lot of support, then I might be able to make another 100 days of surviving the micro. 1.17 caves then i want to thank my tier 3 member this smikola thank you so much for becoming a tier 3 member if you also become a member click the blue join button below the video to check out the different tiers but there we go let's finish off day 100 by finally going to bed there we go 100 days in the minecraft 1.17 caves thank you all for watching hope to see you in another video so until then Mm, bye bye.